This is the day the Lord has made, and we rejoice and we're glad in it. We're grateful for this privilege to come to you as we commence this service today. Let us open our hearts and receive the word of God. God has a blessing for each one of us. He's able to open the windows of heaven. Yes, and pour us out a blessing we won't have room to receive. Let us share this broadcast with a friend, and may heaven shine upon you. God bless you. Greetings in the precious name of Jesus Christ. We bless the Lord once again. We give him glory, praise, and honor to his great name. We thank the Lord for blessing us to come together once again. For this is the day the Lord hath made again. We rejoice. We're glad in it. And we're grateful for you that have tuned in tonight to share the word of God. Indeed, man shall not live by bread alone, but again by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. So let us open our hearts tonight and ask God to bless us. I pray that God will bless all the men of God that's preaching the word of God, teaching the word of God, touch the doctors and nurses and attendants and all those that are helping people to get well. We know God is the healer. By his stripes we're healed. Let's pray for the president and those in authority who live a quiet and peaceful life in this time that we live in the last days. But God is still on the throne. Let us trust him. Let us cast all our cares upon him because he cares for us. Let us pray that God will save some soul, strengthen the people of God. Amen. Restore those that have fallen. And bless the word. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless the Lord. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your long suffering towards us, not when any should perish. We thank you for your word as a lamp to our feet, light into our path. We thank you for the anointing that breaks every yoke, loose every bound. Look down now upon us, Lord, as we are your people and the sheep of your pasture. Bless the word of God tonight and at all times, anoint it with power from on high. Bless all the men of God that's preaching and teaching the word of God. Bless, Lord, hallelujah, the president, those in authorities. We can live a quiet and peaceful life. Oh, touch now in the name of Jesus Christ. Touch the doctors and nurses in attendance as they are working on people, helping them get well. By your stripes, we are healed. Have your way tonight. Bind the force of Satan. Feed the will of the enemy. Send your anointing now that we speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Indeed, in demonstration, your spirit and power that our faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but indeed in the power of God. Have your way tonight. Bless your word. Strengthen us and restore those that have fallen. Lift the spirit of every soul. Yes, Lord, strengthen the people of God. Blessed to be ready to go back with you when you come. And these blessings we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. We ask you to turn to the book of Psalms. The 15th division of Psalms would be our text tonight. It's only five verses. Psalms 15. Amen. Beginning at verse number one. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that worketh up, he that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contempt. But he honoreth them that feareth the Lord. He that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not. He that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be removed. He that doeth these things shall never be removed. Our subject tonight is what it takes to stay in the church what it takes to stay in the church. And of course, the church is the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Praise God. I'm quite sure many of you out there will say the same thing. It's the greatest and the best thing that ever happened to me. And I want to stay in the church. Amen. No demons don't want you to stay. Hellhounds don't want you to stay. But everybody got to have a made-up mind to stay 
in the church of Jesus Christ. And the Lord gives us some beautiful information here tonight to help us to stay in the church, help us to know how to stay in the church and what it takes, as we said, to stay in the church of Jesus Christ. And the psalmist David, amen, anointing of the Holy Ghost, amen, he capsuled it all in, in, in five verses, amen, telling us in no uncertain terms what we need to do, amen, to stay in the church of Jesus Christ. And so in Psalms 15, David starts out with two vital questions. Who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Second question, who shall dwell in thy holy hill? And then there are four words that are important to understand this psalm. And those four words, are first two words, abide and dwell. Who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Both abide and dwell. Both these words mean to stay, to, to remain, or to continue. To stay, remain, or continue. We want to stay in church. Amen. And then the tabernacle and holy hill are the other two words. And both of these words refer to the place of intimate presence or meeting with the Lord. The place of intimate presence or meeting with the Lord, which to, is to us the New Testament church of Jesus Christ. Now, a tabernacle in the Old Testament, and it is still today, a temporary dwelling or meeting place, a temporary dwelling or meeting place. The church is God's spiritual tabernacle. Amen. The temporary dwelling or uh, temporary dwelling or intimacy on the earth with the Lord. Amen. There's no closer place to be with God than in the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are tabernacle because we are pilgrims and strangers. We're leaving here. When the rapture takes place, we're going to be gone. So we're not here to stay. We shouldn't camp out here. We shouldn't get relaxed here as some have done. Amen. Get relaxed. We shouldn't get distracted. Amen. Or displaced or get wrapped up in this world. This world is not our home. Praise God. We have a place. Amen. Jesus, I go to prepare a place for you. And I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. So once you get in the church, amen, you in the greatest place you could be next to heaven. You in hog heaven. <laughs> Praise God, we in the church of Jesus Christ. Some have not realized how blessed they are to be in the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a blessing. Hallelujah. Being born in sin and coming out that world. Amen. We ought to be shouting our shoes off to be in the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the book of Matthew 16 and 18, Jesus said unequivocally, the first mention of the word church. Amen. In the, two, in the New Testament, it's in Matthew 16, 18. I say unto you that thou art Peter and upon this rock. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I'm so glad to be in the church. Amen. And, and in the book of Ephesians, the second chapter, the 19th through the 22nd verse, amen, it also states the Apostle Paul writing, matter of fact, the theme of Ephesians is the church. Now, therefore, we are no more strangers and foreigners, but we are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. The church is the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And it goes on to say, in whom all the building fit to frame together, grow it up into a holy temple, praise God, in the Lord, in whom we ye also are built together as an habitation of God through the Spirit. God inhabits the church. And he inhabits the people of God. We ought to be glad to be a part of the church of Jesus Christ. And then in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, as we forestated, we're not, we, we're not going to camp out here because we're leaving here. And, and in, in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, it says, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of an archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first and then we that are alive and remain uh, uh, shall be caught up together with him in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air so shall we ever be with the Lord. So, so the church, the tabernacle, will soon leave this earth. Now in the days of Moses, it was in the tabernacle that God manifested himself. In the Old Testament tabernacle, amen, they, 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 they God manifested himself and met with his people. And so it is today 
with the church of Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, Acts 7 and 38 tells us that Israel was a church in the wilderness. Israel was a church in the wilderness. And so that confirms, praise God, hallelujah, that we are the church of the New Testament as it says the church uh, in the wilderness which the angels uh, which is which spake of him in the Mount Sinai, you see. So here's what the church in the wilderness. We're the New Testament church today. So we're the spiritual tabernacle. Praise God, hallelujah. We're the spiritual hill, the holy hill. And so I thank God for that. And so we must understand, amen, how blessed we are and just stay in the church. There's no greater place to be than in the church. Now, the next thing we want to make clear critical point the only way to enter the spiritual tabernacle the spiritual holy hill which is the new testament church amen you got to uh, uh, obey the word of god jesus described in john 3 5 how to get in this holy hill in this tabernacle in this church that we are talking about and jesus said in john 3 5 for anybody tonight that are not a part of the church of jesus christ the only way to enter into the spiritual tabernacle which is the Holy Hill, which is a New Testament church, it says in John 3, 5, that Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man is born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Another name for the church is the kingdom of God. You can't come in. Only way to get in is so high you can't get over it. So low you can't get under it. So wide you can't get around it. You got to come in through the door. Amen. That door is this plan of salvation. Praise God. Predicated on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. He said in John, amen, not John, but Mark 16, preach the gospel to every creature, and he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So the only way to get into this holy hill, amen, praise God, this tabernacle called the church, praise God, hallelujah, you got to be born again, or the water and the spirit cannot enter. And then Acts 2.38 makes it even plainer. It says in Acts 2.38, Amen. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes, the only way to get in. And then in perspective, once we enter, amen, we must abide and dwell by continuing in the apostles' doctrine. We must abide and dwell by continuing in in the apostles doctrine and so acts 2 42 goes on to say and they continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine so the subject tonight is very relevant amen praise god what it takes to stay in the church what it takes to stay in the church what it takes to continue in the apostles doctrine because you got to be in the church to go back with jesus when he comes that's why the devil fight all of us so hard he don't want to stay in the church he don't want us to abide in the tabernacle. He don't want us to stay in the holy hill. He wants us to get out, praise God, from Zion. But God put us in. You ought to say, I'm going to stay right here till Jesus come back. Amen. How to stay in the church. What it takes to stay in the church. So by the expression holy hill, amen, David is referring to Mount Zion on which the temple was built by Solomon. When he says, who shall dwell in the top of that, who shall dwell in that holy hill? In the Old Testament, the holy hill was Mount Zion on which the temple uh, was built by Solomon. Mount Zion, or the holy hill, was chosen by God for a special residence of his grace. A special residence of his grace. His grace was in that mount, that Mount Zion. His grace was in that holy hill. And, and something is said here in Psalms 48 that's very interesting. He says there, and let's read that, if you will. Let's go to Psalm 48 and 1, and let's read that. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. And that was called Mount Zion. And in verse 2 said, amen, beautiful for situations, amen, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Amen. And then it goes on to say in verse 3, God is known in her palaces uh, for a refuge. And see, all that's talking uh, uh, prophetically about the church because the church is all of that. <laughs> the church is all of that. In the Old Testament, they had the tabernacle and they had the, uh, uh, Mount Zion, amen, the city of the living God. The church is all of that. 
amen, in the New Testament. And so let us understand, amen, there's some things that it says here in Psalms 48, verse 1 through 3, seven things is stated here. And these seven things are applicable to the church in the New Testament of Jesus Christ. Amen. It tells us, number one, it's the city of, the li of our God, of the living God. The church is the city of the living God. Amen. He, we are a city. Amen. Praise God. That set on a hill that cannot be moved. And then it's the mountain of his holiness. God holiness dwells in the church of Jesus Christ. That's why you need to stay in the church. You can't live holy unless you stay in the church. You can't be holy unless you stay in the church of Jesus Christ. And then it says it's beautiful for situations. Amen. I like that. Go back to that verse. Beautiful for situations. And, 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 and when you get in the church, you're ready for, for whatever situation may come up. You, and you can handle any situation that come up when you're in the church of Jesus Christ. You can handle any situation. You're ready for any situation. And praise God, you're in the best situation you've ever been in <laughs> when you come in the church of Jesus Christ. You're in the best situation. We done been in some situations. Sin had us in all kind of situations, all kind of messed up situations. But we came in the church, and this is the best situation we ever have become a part of. It's the greatest situation. And you can handle any situation as long as you stay in the church. If you get out the church, you ain't going to be able to handle much of nothing <laughs> with outside the church. You ain't going to be handling nothing. Praise God. But he said, beautiful, beautiful for situations. So we ought to just relax and be in the church. Praise God. Whatever situation come up, God can handle if you stay in the church. Whatever situation come to bear, God can handle if you stay in the church of Jesus Christ. It's beautiful for situations. Yes, every situation. Praise God. The next thing is the joy of the whole earth. Praise God. We didn't find no joy till we got in the church. We didn't have no real joy till we got in the church. Somebody said, this joy that I have, the world, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. You just stay in the church. And if you stay in the church, you're going to have joy in the midst of your challenges, joy in the midst of your situations. Amen. Joy, 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 joy. With joy do we draw water, it says in Isaiah 12 and 3, from the waters. With joy do we draw water from the wells of salvation. Amen. So, 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 so beautiful situation. It's the joy of the whole earth. You got joy when you come into church. You can't find no joy in the world. That little cheap thrill lasts for a few minutes. There ain't no joy. But I'm talking about real joy when you come into church of Jesus Christ. And it is the city of the great king. Yes, it is the city, a spiritual city. Praise God. We're going to talk about that in a minute. The city of the great king. Praise God. And it is the place where God could be known, where one could be enlightened, praise God. You can't know God until you come into the church. You can't really know him, praise God. Paul, Paul said in Philippians uh, uh, 3, I want to know him and the power of his resurrection, hallelujah, the fellowship of his suffering. You can't know him until you come into church. And, and, and it's a place where you can be enlightened with the knowledge of God. We were spiritually ignorant. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Only through the Lord we can become enlightened. Eyes come open. Praise God. Hallelujah. When we come into the church, you better stay in the church. I want to encourage everybody to stay in the church. Amen. In this pandemic, the devil fighting people. Get them out the church. Amen. People leaving the church. Some of them, not, I'm not saying a lot, praise God, but people are leaving. And of course, they were leaving before we had the pandemic. People always been leaving the church. Praise God from Zion. But you got to tell the devil, I'm going to stay. Y'all can go if y'all want to go. I just look like that. I may have some power trials and tribulation. The devil may fight me, but I'm going to stay in the house of God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Don't let nothing get you out the house of God. No demon, no hellhound. Praise God from Zion. And David's encouraging us. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's the city. It's the place where you can know God. It's the place where God can be known for a refuge. What is a refuge? It, it, it's a place of shelter. Amen. The demons all around us. Amen. He can't come in the church, though. The devil all around. They can't come in the church. Amen. It's a refuge. Praise God. Like in the Old Testament, there were six cities of refuge. And if you could escape from the enemy and get in a refuge, you were safe. And so we, we, when we escaped and, and, and God snatched us out the world and brought us in the church, amen. The church is a refuge. Praise God. And that's why you got to stay. That's why, again, he fights you. Amen. Because he wants you to throw up your hands and 
and just surrender and give up because of what you're going through. But listen, the church is beautiful for your situation. It can handle your situation. Ain't no situation God can't handle when you're in the church. Amen. It's beautiful for situation. Amen. Praise God. Just get out the way and let the Lord handle your situation. Praise God. It's a refuge from the storm. Praise God. A refuge from the challenges of life. It's a refuge, praise God, from Zion. And that's why he said the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. And so the holy hill, Mount Zion, praise God, was a type or a symbolic representation of the New Testament church. Amen. And it's said, and, and I'm just reading here, amen, Matthew, uh, uh, just some uh, 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 reiteration and confirmation, a Matthew 5, 14, it, Jesus said in the, in the Sermon on the Mount, amen, you're, you're the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill, amen, should not be moved. We like that Mount Zion, that city that's set on a hill, amen, it cannot be moved. Praise God, you're the light of the world. When you come in the world, you, uh, you come in the church, you get light. That's why he said earlier, amen, you enlighten, praise God, hallelujah. You get better understanding in the church. And then in Hebrews, watch this now, Hebrews 12 and 22, but ye are come, now this is the Lord talking to the church now, ye are come to Mount Zion. The church is the spiritual Mount Zion, like the city of David in the Old Testament, we're the spiritual Mount Zion. It's spelled S there, but it's in, in the Old Testament, Z, amen, Z, S, it's still the same thing, amen. We are, uh, come to Mount Zion unto the city of the living God. When you come in the church, you come to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. Praise God. This is the closest thing to heaven when you come in the church of Jesus Christ. You're the heavenly Jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels. Child, you got angels all around you. <laughs> you got angels encamped about you. <laughs> Praise God. That's why you ought to realize the safest place to be is in the church. If you did the devil fighting you, amen, stay in the church. If you got to cry, cry in the church. If you got to fall out, <laughs> fall out in the church. Praise God from Zion because it's the best place to be is in the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. What it take to stay in the church? That's what we talking about. What it take? My subject is what it take to stay in the church? Praise God. Somebody ought to stay in the church. And so, so we understand from these verses uh, we understand that the church is spiritual Mount Zion. The church is the city of the living God. Amen. And the church is the heavenly Jerusalem. And so therefore in the passage in Psalms, amen, it is a type of the church and tells us seven things in the New Testament, amen, which, which, which it is to us today. Praise God, the church of Jesus Christ. And so in the book of Psalms, after having laid this little foundation here, we're going to talk about, amen, from verses 2 through 5, amen, we're going to talk about having established what the tabernacle or the holy hill represents. We now must see the characteristics that it takes to stay, amen, and remain and dwell in the church. The characteristics that it takes to stay, how many want to stay? How many want to remain? I know the devil fighting you. I know demons and hell and hounds coming against you. Amen. But I want to show you through the David. Now, the devil fought David now, and he thought he tried to get him from the tabernacle and from the holy here. David, I ain't going nowhere. I've been there and done that. I done been through all kind of stuff. Saul tried to kill me. Praise God. I've been through stuff, made some mistakes, babe, but I jumped up and said, hey, I got to stay in the church. Praise God. If you stumble, stumble and get up and stay in the church. Amen. Praise God. Demons fight, stay in the church. If you make a mistake, don't just throw up your hands and leave the church. Hey Amen. There's forgiveness in the church. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's salvation in the church. There's strength in the church. Everything you need is in the church of Jesus Christ. Praise God. So my subject is what it takes. What does it take? And David said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the Holy Ghost. I'm going to sum it up in, in, in several things here. And he got a lot there packed in to them for just four verses. Verses two through five. He got a lot packed in there that tells you the characteristics of what it takes. Amen. To stay in the church. And, and you want to maybe jot them down. And if you listen to this message, as always, you can pull it up again and just and go over some more. Praise God. I want to stay. I want to stick and stay. Amen. Praise God in the church of Jesus Christ. And David made up his mind. Said, if God's of what others do, I'm going to stay. Praise God. I'm going to stay. What it take to stay in the church. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so he gives us these several characteristics of what it takes to stay, to remain, and to dwell. Amen. Dwell means to stay, remain, and be steadfast. And the first thing it takes is it, it, found in verse 2. Amen. But it, it says there, but 
here's the uh, all right amen psalms amen we need psalm 15 praise god hallelujah let's get psalm 15 oh that's a mistake there amen it says psalms 1 amen it should have been 15 all right it's just a typographical error all right amen psalm 15 what it take to stay in the church the second thing it takes it takes number one it takes it takes walking uprightly it says there in the first part of verse 2 amen he that amen who shall abide in our tabernacle who shall dwell in our holy hill? Praise God. So he asked a question, two questions. He said, the first thing it takes, who shall, who's the one that's going to buy? Who's the one that's going to stick and stay? Who's the one that's going to dwell in the holy hill? Who's the one that's going to dwell, just stay? See, I dwell at 518 Antioch. I live there, praise God. Who's going to live in the church? Hey, but who's going to dwell and not be back and forth and on and off and in and out? Who's going to abide in the tabernacle? Who's going to dwell in the holy hill? Praise God. Which one are you going to be? You, you, or you and your, our audience tonight? Praise God. It's going to be everyone. I stay, everybody, I want you to stay. He said the first thing it takes, I'm talking about these several characteristics. Amen. These several characteristics that it takes to stay in the church. First of all, it takes, amen, a person that walketh uprightly. That's the first thing it takes. A person that walks, and what does that mean? If it takes one that walks upright, that amen, upright means marked by strong moral rectitude. You got strong morals, praise God. You got to have strong morals to stay in the church, having or exhibiting a strict regard for what is morally right. Praise God. When you, a person that's going to stay in the church, a person just got to be a person that want to do, do right. <laughs> you can't stay in the church if you don't want to do right. Amen. You got saved to do right, and it's going to take doing right to stay in the church. Praise God. And then one that is willing to do right. Amen. We just sang a song, got a man to do right. Praise God. Hallelujah. When you got a man to do right, you're going to stay in the church. Praise God. And then number two, is he is really what he professes to be. Amen. Some people make out can't hold out. When you really what you profess to be is in your heart, you're going to stay in the church. Amen. Praise God. It, and it means also when he said walketh uprightly, praise God, it means he is a person of integrity. Amen. Soundness and completeness. Whole and undivided. In other words, amen, it, it ain't, he ain't divided. Like part, of his, part of his heart want to be in the world. Part of his heart want to be in the church. His mind is divided, heart divided. He can't stay in the church. <laughs> amen. Praise God. Upright means, amen, whole and complete and sound. He, he got a sound mind and it's undivided. He ain't distracted by worldly stuff. Amen. Then number four, amen, he is a person that endeavors to stand completely in all the will of God. He gonna stand in everything he learned, he's gonna grab hold to it. He's gonna stand in all the will of God. He's gonna learn the will of God and stand in it. And then the fifth thing, amen, a person that walketh upright is a person of honesty. Amen. He's honest. He's honest with God. He's honest with other people. Praise God from Zion. He he what you see is what you get. Amen. What you see is what you get. It's a person that's honest. Praise God. Hallelujah. And there's no hidden agendas. Praise God. Hallelujah. You, you, what you see is what you get. And then the second thing it takes to stay in the church, it says that he that worketh righteousness. Now notice at the top of the list. Is, is the things that dealing with holiness, the things that dealing with righteousness. That's on top of the list. David knew that if you ain't walking up right, you can't stay in the church. Amen. If you ain't, praise God, working righteous, you got to work on this thing called righteousness. Amen. God baptizes us in Jesus' name and fill us with the Holy Ghost. And we got to keep on working on them faults and flaws and defects. Amen. We're going to work righteousness. Amen. He that worketh righteousness, work it. Amen. Keep on working. It's like Paul said. Amen. Praise God. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. God that worketh in you, both the will and do of his good pleasure. And so worketh righteousness simply means he strives to walk in the ordinances and commandments of God and takes care to give diligence in walking in the commandments of God. Like David said, that word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. And then secondly, the person that worketh righteousness, he, he strives to live holy and justly before God and man. He's striving. He know God is watching him. And he's going to try to live right. Did not Psalms, uh, 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 Proverbs 14 and 24 says, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is reproach to any people. And then thirdly, he is honest and straight in his 
interactions and involvements and engage with others. He's honest. Amen. He don't do no underhanded and scrupulous stuff with people. Amen. He's straight up with people. Praise God. Amen. You straight up, you're going to stay in that church. Praise God. The devil can get a hold to you because he's not straight up. Praise God. So he is honest and straight in his interactions and, and, and involvements and engagement with others. He do people right, do right by people. Praise God. He live holy. He understands holiness involved his relationship with other people. Praise God. I'm talking about what it takes to stay in the church. Praise God. You can't be doing things, amen, unscrupulous, amen, dealing with people and talking about you're going to stay in the church. And then he operates from what is ethically right and not underhanded. He ain't going to do no underhanded stuff. Amen. He just going to work righteousness. And everything he do, he strive to do it right. He going to pay his taxes and amen, do right by the government, do right by the boss man. He ain't clocking out amen, early and, and, and clocking in late. <laughs> Praise God. Trying to get money he ain't work for. He just going to do right. Praise God from Zion. Amen. His habits of life are based on truth. His habits of life. Amen. We got to have honest and truthful habits, amen, if we're going to stay in the church, you understand? See, a lot of people say they're in the church, but their lifestyle ain't saying the same thing. Being in the church is, is, is not a notion, amen, praise God, like they said, two, two birds are on a fence, and one took a notion to fly, and one, well, how many was left? Hey, well, well, two of them still there, because it just took a notion. Church is not a notion, amen, praise God, it's the real deal here, amen, you got to do some things, amen, to stay in the church, praise God, it, it, you, you just can't, amen, and say I'm in a church and then you figure a lot of people physically amen got the name on the roll book but they're not really in the real church of Jesus Christ amen they got to do these things we're talking about here tonight amen to be in the church say God is holy and he's the call you is holy he said be holy in all manner of conversation that means in every manner of life Amen. We got to be striving to live holy. And if we stumble, get up and confess and keep on working on it. Amen. He said, he that worketh righteousness. Keep on working on it. Praise God. Work out your salvation. Praise God from Zion. And then, and then the third thing it takes, amen, to stay in the church is found in the next part of that verse. Praise God. He that speaketh the truth in his heart. You know, some people lying through their teeth. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It ain't from the heart. Praise God. Amen. He that speaketh truth in his heart. See, Proverbs 4 and 23 says, out of the abundance of the heart. I'm sorry. Yeah. Out of the heart are the issues of life. Out of the heart are the issues of life. What's in your heart going to come out your mouth? Praise God. So, so if you're going to stay in the church, you got to speak the truth in your heart. Praise God. Truth got to be in your heart. Amen. As it says in, 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 in uh, Psalms 51, David said, Thou that thou is truth on the inward part. Praise God. On the inward part, thou shalt make me no wisdom. And so truthfulness must start in the heart if you're going to stay in the church. Praise God. Luke 6 and 45 says, for of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. What's in your heart going to come out? Is lying in your heart? Lying going to come out. <laughs> Praise God. A habitual lie cannot abide in God's tabernacle. Amen. People that practice lying, they not in the church. Praise God. Not Jesus' church because, amen, the church is the pillar ground of the truth according to 1 Timothy 3, 15. And so if you're in the church, you got to speak truth. And, and, and in your heart, praise God, it says here in this text, the third thing is he got to speak if you're going to abide in the tabernacle and dwell in the holy hill, you got to speak the truth in your heart. Amen. A real child of God does not live with deception. Amen. You just can't do that. God is not a, God is a, he's the truth. Amen. He's, I'm the way, the truth in their life. You're going to stick with me and be in my tabernacle. you got to be a person of truth. Praise God. Hallelujah. And since the man and the heart are closely related, amen, even in his thinking the child of God strives to be truth. Even in his thinking, you want to think truth. Not only talk truth, but think truth. Proverbs 23 and 7 says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So he's going to think truth. Amen. And if you think truth, it gets in your heart. It's going to work out in your members. And so we must speak the truth to God and man. Sometimes people saying things to God and they ain't honest. <laughs> saying things to God and they ain't truthful. Praise God. Hallelujah. And then saying things to man, they ain't truthful. Amen. So old saying is to thine own self be true. And it shall follow the night, the day. You shall not be false to any man. Proverbs, amen, 12 and 22 says, lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but he that dealeth truly are his delight. Amen. You want to stay in the church, you got to speak the truth. 
Amen. In your heart. Got to come from the heart. Praise God. And the, the next thing D says, amen, the next thing it takes, what it takes to stay in the church? Who going to abide in this tabernacle? Who going to dwell in this holy hill? Amen. It takes one that does not backbite. Amen. That's start verse number three. He that backbiteth not with his tongue. You got to watch that tongue. That tongue gets you in trouble. The word backbite means to say a spiteful things about a person. Amen. We have a saying, if you can't say nothing good about a person, don't say nothing. Don't let your tongue get you out the tabernacle. Don't let your tongue get you out the holy hill. Don't let your tongue get you out the church. Your tongue can get you out the church of Jesus Christ and cause you not to make heaven your home. Praise God. And the word slander means the, the utterance of false charges and misrepresentations which defame and damage another person's reputation. Don't say nothing to defame nobody. Don't say nothing to damage somebody's reputation. Amen. Praise God. And something you don't even know. You're just talking. Amen. Spewing out stuff. Praise God. Hallelujah. And don't even know anything. Praise God. You can't say nothing good. Don't say nothing. Praise God. But he says, surely slander is a sin. Surely backbiting is a sin when you defame, defame or, or, or damage another person's reputation. And then the third thing there about backbiting, we must cautiously formulate our words so that we are uttering the, that which is painstakingly accurate. If we can't say nothing accurate, amen, don't say nothing at all. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Formulate your words. Sometimes we get to talking and, and, and our, our mouth get ahead of our head and ahead of our heart. Praise God. So you got to make sure what you say and what you utter because this has a bearing on whether you're going to stay in the tabernacle, whether you're going to stay in the holy hill. Amen. This is what it takes to stay in the church. God said it in the word. You can't be backbiting. Amen. You got to say things that are accurate. And then number four, we are not to make others others uh, uh, false. I'm sorry. We must not make others false, the subject of common talk. Sometimes people, oh, all of us got faults. All of us got defects and flaws. Amen. That, that shouldn't be your, your, your conversation piece. <laughs> Somebody else's faults and flaws and defects. Amen. Some people gossip on, gossip on people. Amen. And they're just talking uh, things uh, of sport or ridicule. Amen. Uh, nor speaking of them in pleasure. Praise God. Some people say things and laugh at people. Oh, such and such a this and such and such. I'm talking about what it takes to stay in the church. Amen. God said you shouldn't backbite if you're going to stay in the church of Jesus Christ. How many want to stay? Who going to buy it in the tabernacle? I'm asking the question. Who going to dwell in the holy hill? Praise God. You got to have a made up mind and be willing to do the things that it takes to stay. Everybody can stay in the tabernacle. Everybody can stay in the holy hill. Everybody can stay in the church. God wouldn't save you if you couldn't stay in the church. Amen. God wouldn't baptize you and feed you the Holy Ghost if you couldn't stay in the church. And can he keep you in these areas we're talking about? Can he keep you from doing these things? And if you got a mind to live holy and live right, amen, God will keep you in all these things we're talking about here tonight. You're going to hate sin when you repent. See, you say repent and be baptized in Jesus' name. When you repent, you're going to hate stuff. And then you find out stuff you've been doing that wasn't right, amen, before you got saved. Now you're saved now. And you say, I did not know that was wrong. I didn't know I shouldn't be doing it. Man, I want to abide in this tabernacle. I enjoy I got all this beautiful situations and, and it's better than what I had in the world and I ain't giving up nothing in the body of Christ I ain't giving up nothing for the stuff that I had in the world I'm giving up all that stuff I'm a hate sin repentance is when you change your mind your attitude towards sin you're sorry for the things you used to do amen you're ready to change your mind and if you change your mind God will change your life yeah, I say if you change your mind God will change your life Amen. Praise God from Zion. Yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. See, tell the devil, I ain't backbiting. I ain't going to get in no conversation with nobody. Amen. Defaming people and saying negative stuff about folk. Praise God from Zion. We all come from the same dialogue, sin. And we ain't got no, amen, praise God, no a monop a monopoly to say things about somebody else when we all, amen, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But thank God for being in the church. Amen. You ought to say, thank God everybody's in the church and we're in a place of beautiful situation, amen, that can change our lives, because if any man be in Christ, come on somebody, he's a new creature and old things are passed away, we ain't need to be talking about them old things, and all things have become new, praise God from Zion, because God has made us brand new, 
Praise God. Hallelujah. And we ought to be glad for this situation. Amen. This Mount Zion. Amen. To be in the church. Praise God. And the fifth thing it takes to stay in the church. It takes, amen, doing no evil to your neighbor. Amen. That's also, praise God, a part of verse 3. And, and, and it says, and do it no and does nor does evil to his neighbor. Amen. Praise God. Now, why you want to do evil to your neighbor? We all not want to do that. So to do nothing willingly that would hurt another. See, when you in the church, amen, your heart's right. You don't want to do nothing. It's what it takes to stay in the church. Amen, don't do nothing that's going to hurt somebody. Don't do nothing. Come on, say amen, that's going to willingly hurt somebody. Praise God. Hallelujah. And then, and then to do nothing to offend or grieve the spirit of another person. You don't want to grieve nobody's spirit. Don't do nothing that's going to make somebody feel bad and that's going to take somebody down and skirt, discourage them. Amen. Don't say nothing that's going to discourage somebody. Come on, somebody. If you want to stay in the house of God, God says you got to be like this right here. And do, do in order to do any evil to your neighbor, praise God. And then you do not tolerate slander or gossip about another. You got to say, excuse me, we're not going to talk about that. Amen, that's gossip. Excuse me, amen, I don't want to talk about that. Let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about something encouraging. Let's talk about something, like I said in Ephesians 4, to edify and to build somebody up. I'm saying, amen, what it take to stay in the house of God? He said, what it take to stay in the church? Now, David nailing this thing down. He's nailing it down, brother, I tell you. Amen. Man, he said, you ain't going to tolerate no gossip. You ain't going to tolerate no slander. You ain't going to tolerate. You know, when people know you're going to stand, they'll go somewhere else with, with somebody that's going to, amen, amen, a feed into what they trying to say. But when you stand in for holding it, you're going to get rid of all the folk <laughs> that don't want to do right. All the folk that don't want to be in, in, in the tabernacle. Now, some people hanging around the tabernacle, hanging around the house of God, praise God, but they not in, praise God, their heart not there, but they're hanging. Sometimes the devil got some people around just to aggravate the ones that's trying to abide in the tabernacle. The one that's trying to live holy and do right. The devil have people hanging around. Amen. Just to aggravate them. But you got to pick your friends. You got to pick your company. Praise God. Pick people that, amen, gonna truly abide from the heart. People that strive and live holy. Praise God. The ones that ain't just excuse me. Amen. You got to get you some more friends. Amen. And get away from the folk. The Bible says evil communication corrupt good manners. You know better than the company you keep and birds of a feather flock together. Come on, somebody. Amen. You got to surround yourself with people that want to live holy. Surround yourself with people that want to live right. And you, they'll help you to live right. You'll help them to live right. Praise God from Zion. Because you abide and you want to stay in the tabernacle. Hey, don't take but a little living and living a whole lump. Amen. You get stuff in your heart and sometimes you can't get it out. If God don't have mercy on you, you're done for. Amen. People can contaminate you. Praise God. But then there's those that can help you and to fertilize you and to help encourage you and so you got to pick your company praise God from Zion because some just hanging around just like in Israel they was, had was some hanging around in Israel the church in the wilderness amen oh we don't we want to go back to Egypt we don't like this light bread and Moses brought us out here to die and yah 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 praise God and praise God and they convinced the people and they got all sad and got contaminated and guess what their carcasses fell in the wilderness amen Korah, Dathan and Ambira all them folk amen Man, folk listen to them and God opened up the earth and got rid of them. They didn't want to abide in the tabernacle. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to want to abide. Amen. Don't let the devil destroy you. Having been beautifully saved and got a beautiful situation. Praise God from Zion. Amen. Heaven in your view. Praise God. Got to keep heaven in your view. Praise God. The devil going to tempt you, but keep heaven in your view. Praise God from Zion. Amen. Talking about this. Amen. Doing evil to your neighbor. Amen. And then the last thing there, do nothing to injure your relations with others. Some people damage their relationship with another person because they didn't do them right or didn't treat them right. And sometimes the re re relationship ain't, won't ever be repaired. Amen. It's, it, you mess it up so much it ain't going to never be repaired. The Bible says, brother finished it's hard to be one in a strong city. His contention is like the bars of a castle. You got to value people that are trying to help you. And, and value people that, praise God, hallelujah, trying to do you good. Praise God, hallelujah. And appreciate when God gives you some
some holy friends. Amen. Praise God. Don't, don't, don't turn people against you. Praise God. Because, amen, you ain't trying to abide in the tabernacle. And you ain't trying to dwell in the holy hill. And you ain't trying to, praise God, appreciate being in the church of Jesus Christ. And do everything you can to help somebody. Do everything you can, amen, to be a blessing. You know the golden rule says, amen, do unto others. It says there in Matthew 7, 12. Therefore, to all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, amen, do ye even so to them, amen. This is the law and the prophets, praise God. How many want to live by that? What it take to stay in the church? Mm. Next thing, it takes one that will not take up a reproach against his neighbor. Amen. Praise God. That's the last thing in verse 3. One that don't take up a reproach against his neighbor. Praise God. And so what does that mean to take up a reproach against his neighbor? Amen. To not heap up insults uh, upon others. Some people, uh, they're not sensitive to what they say. Amen. And, and what they, how they talk to people. Praise God. And so when you, amen, when you want to abide in the tabernacle and stay in the Holy here, you don't heap up insults against, you don't say things and do things that insult people. You let your love cover it. You're not going to be argumentative. Some people are argumentative. If it ain't hot, it's too cold. It ain't cold. Too cold is too hot. Too high is too low. You just want to argue. Just want to have a dispute. Praise God from Zion. Amen. Instead of just letting some things go. Some things you got to let go if you're going to stay in that church. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. Some things you got to let go if you're going to stay in the church. Amen. You'll let the devil, amen, praise God, bring you down. Amen. Tit for tat. Amen. You got something to say and you got to get the last word. Amen. The last word and all that kind of stuff. And next thing you get hot, you get upset. Praise God. You're in a dispute. Praise God. And next thing you done messed up your spirit and messed up somebody else's spirit. Praise God. And now, amen, you're on your way out the house of God. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. Some people leave because they can't get along with somebody. Amen. Don't let nobody run you out the church and, and don't you run nobody out. Praise God from Zion. And you got to look over some stuff. Come on, somebody. And let the Lord work it out. Amen. While you're trying to figure out God got to work, God said, you stay. I put you in the house of God. What it take to stay in the church? It take these things to stay in the church. It take love to stay in the church. Praise God. You didn't come here for nobody. You didn't come in the church. Amen. For nobody. You came to be saved. And as well as, as, well as you stay folk of folk. Praise God. Everybody in Israel didn't make it to the promised land. Everybody coming to church ain't going to make it to heaven either. Amen. Some going to come and some going to go. Sister the best late so the best way you say it's like Grand Central Railroad. Some coming and some going. Praise God from that. But I'm going to stick and stay. Hello somebody. You got to stick and stay. You got to say a charge to keep I have and a God to glorify. And you got to know when a conversation is going so far so as to uh, be a reproach a disgrace a, 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 dis, a, 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 a displeasure to God and other. Amen. You got to know when to cut it off and turn it loose. Praise God. And, and just pray. Praise God. You ain't going to solve everything Thing. You ain't going to satisfy everybody. You try to satisfy Jesus and then you will satisfy the folk that's trying to satisfy Jesus. Some folk you ain't going to never satisfy. The Bible speaks in Romans 1 of some people implacable. Pray, implacable somebody pronounce it. Implacable, implacable, whichever one it is. You can't satisfy people. Amen. Satisfy Jesus and you're going to satisfy the people that's trying to satisfy Jesus. Hello somebody. Praise God. Hallelujah. So you got to know when to turn a conversation loose and it's done gone far enough. It won't bring reproach. And then the next thing about uh, uh, this reproach thing, amen, not to raise reproach or, or receive reproach from other. Amen. Don't give reproach and don't receive reproach. Praise God. Amen. About people. You got to let your love cover the multitude of sins. Amen. Praise God. Then rather than to be drawn into reproachful conflicts, a reproachful conflict, a Romans, a part of Romans, Proverbs 10 and 12 said, hatred stirreth up strife, but love covers all sins. Yes, love covers all sins. Hallelujah. I love that. And then the next thing it takes to stay in the church. Anybody want to stay in the church? Anybody want to abide in it? I'm talking about stick and stay in the tabernacle. Stick and stay in the holy hill. And David lines it out, the things that it takes. What it takes to stay in the church? Then it takes one that, 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 that despise ungodliness. You got to despise 
ungodliness. Some people despise people and despise people that do it good. The Bible speaks in the New Testament. Some people are despised of those that are good instead of despising sin, instead of despising unrighteousness. Praise God. And that's what it's talking about in the first part of verse 4. In whose eyes a vile person is contempt. You got to be, you got to make sure you don't despise people that are doing right. Praise God. In whose eyes a vile person is contemned. Praise God. A vile person is an unbeliever or one that's not believing, of not living right. Amen. Who looks down on the things of God with contempt. Amen. The vile person, again, is one that, amen, that's an unbeliever in particular, but it could be people that's done, got messed up, that used to be saved as well. Amen. Amen. It's people that look down on the things of God with contempt. Child, don't take all that to be saved. You ain't got to do all that. Amen. Y'all just too strict. And this, that, people say all kind of foolish. <laughs> I, this the best thing ever happened. I'm learning how to live holy. I'm learning how to do the right. Praise God from Zion. Anybody love the truth, you got to fall in love with this thing. The, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. The more you fall in love with the word, praise God, the hallelujah, the better you're going to feel. Amen. You get a spiritual appetite for the word and you fall in love with the word. Praise God. Fall in love with Jesus. Anybody love the Lord. So a vow person is an unbeliever or one that's done fell away. The Bible speaks about apostates and all kind of things of that sort who looks down on the things of God with contempt. Praise God. You ought to be thanking God for the word. Praise God. He ain't going to tell you nothing that ain't right. God ain't going to tell you nothing you can't do. Praise God. How You got to have a heart to say, Lord, I thank you. You could have left me out there in the world. You could have left me out there. Jesus from Zion. Amen. Destroyed by the enemy. But so glad you saved me. I'm the glad God saved you. I'm the glad God put you in the church. And whatever temptation come, rebuke them temptation. Man, I'm glad to be in the house of God. I'm so glad he come on a satan that God saved me when he did and then uh, 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 number two a, a real child of God will contemn or despise the character and lifestyle of a vile person rather than envy and condone or make allowances for them amen some people make allowance for people that's doing wrong amen praise God and, and they, they condone wrong praise God but but if you are, are striving to live holy and if you want to stay in the tabernacle you can't be friends with people that ain't doing right you can't be condoning wrong and, and, and get locked jaw when they saying things that they shouldn't be saying oh I don't want to hurt their feeling praise God, you got to stand for Jesus, or they're gonna hurt your feelings. And next thing you're gonna be out the house of God, and you don't want to be out the house of God, you want to be stay, you want to stick and stay, you want to abide in the tabernacle, you want to dwell in the holy hill. Praise God from Zion, amen. So, a real child of God again, amen, will, 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 will condemn or, or despise, amen, the character and lifestyle, amen, of those that are doing wrong, amen. Praise God, rather than condoning or making allowances, and then the next thing. Amen. A person abiding in an intimate place with God cannot at the same time have an intimate friendship with unbelievers. Amen. Two can't walk together except they agree. Amen. You can't have it both ways. Either you have it with God or have it with them. It cannot have it both ways. Our judgment of an unbeliever must agree with the word of God. I say our judgment of an unbeliever or people that ain't walking right ought to agree with the word of God. It says in 2 Corinthians 6.14 Amen. Be not only yoked together with unbelievers. What fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion has light with darkness? What communion uh, apartment has light with darkness? See, 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 birds of a feather can't fight, uh, 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 flock together. Light and dark can't mix at the same time. Praise God from Zion. So you want to bat in a tabernacle? Amen. You can't be condoning and having intimate friendship with people, amen, that ain't living right. Amen. Then if, if you condoning and, 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 and intimate with them, then it, because you're not living right and you ain't really in the, in the tabernacle, you're only there in your body, but you're not there in your heart. Praise God. The Bible says in Proverbs 14 and 14, the backslider in heart is filled with his own ways. The backslider in heart is filled with his own ways. Praise God from Zion. And then the next thing, who shall abide in that tabernacle? Who shall dwell in the holy hill? What it take to stay in the church? It takes one, watch this now, verse uh, uh, number four, amen. He, he that honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that honoreth them, when you, when, when you honor people that, that fear the Lord, you live in holy. Sometimes people doing right, 
and, and people got attitudes towards them. People doing right, and they don't like them because they're doing right. Maybe because they're showing up, they're wrong. That's why they don't like them. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. But God's going to be the judge of that. Praise God. He that honors those that fear the Lord. If you're going to stay in the tabernacle, if, what it take to stay in the church? If you're going to stay in the tabernacle, we got to honor, praise God, those that fear the Lord. Amen. We should have no respect of person. Amen. Amen. No clicks, praise God, but respect those that fear the Lord. If a man fear the Lord, a sister fear the Lord, you ought to respect that person because they got the fear of God in their heart. It just sticks out all over them that they fear the Lord. The Bible says that to fear the Lord is to depart from evil. Praise God to fear the Lord and keep his commandment it's the whole duty of man amen you shouldn't have respect to person but respect those that fear God amen a person that can have wealth listen to this now a person can have wealth and great a bill have a great name amen but when they do not amen praise God fear the Lord amen God don't count that yet they do not honor amen praise God but but we should not honor them if they don't fear the Lord I don't care how much money they got I don't care how, how much a bigger house they got I'm, I'm with the name they got in the world but if, but if they don't honor the Lord amen amen you should not have a fear of God for them praise God because they don't they, they don't honor God praise God and so we should not be honoring anybody that don't fear the Lord. Praise God. You got to pray for them. That's what you got to pray for them. But you that are going to stay in the tabernacle, something going to be wrong in your heart if you honoring people that ain't doing right. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So when you are, when you when you going to stay in the tabernacle, you got to honor people that fear the Lord. Something ain't right in your heart if you honoring people and holding up people that ain't doing right. Praise God from Zion. Amen. Can I get a witness tonight? And then it's, it's another way to say it. We should, we should desire the friendship and conversation of those that fear the Lord. You ought to want to be friends with people that fear the Lord. You ought to want to have conversation with people that fear the Lord. Amen. Then the next thing, we should esteem very highly and love the people that esteem the Lord. Amen. That fear the Lord, rather. Esteem them highly and love because you see they fear the Lord. Amen. You ought to respect them and esteem them highly and love the Bible say because they fear the Lord we should show support to those that fear the Lord praise God amen you ought to lift them up and pray for them those that cook we can pray for everybody the ones that don't fear the Lord too but amen amen respect those that amen that is obvious that they fear the Lord we should express gratitude to those that fear the Lord we should respect God and the ones that respect the Lord. We ought to respect God and, and the ones that respect God. If they respect God, amen, you ought to respect them the ones that respect God. Respect God. If you respect God, you're going to respect the ones that respect God. Hallelujah. All right. And so the next thing there, it takes a person that, that's of their word. That's the next thing in verse number four. Amen. He that sweareth to his own hurt and changes not. We're almost to the end here. He that sweareth to his own hurt and fear is not. How about that? Amen. It takes a prayer. If you want to stay in the church, amen, praise God. First of all, keep your word to God. Say, I promise the Lord, amen, that he would save me. I'm going to go every step of the way. And keep your word to other people, praise God. If you want to stay in the church, what it take to stay in the church? You got to be a person of your word. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Swear to your own hurt, to your own hurt. If it hurts you to keep your word, let it hurt you. Don't let it hurt the person. Let it hurt you. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we should keep our word when, when it is in our power. Now, some things are beyond our control. It's not in our power. Amen. If we could have done it, we would have kept the word. But some things are beyond your, 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 uh, your, your, your control. Amen. You wanted to do it, but uh, some things, things transpire beyond your control. So when it's in your power, even when it hurts, you ought to still keep your word. So we must keep our word, though later, praise God, amen, uh, 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 though later it may cause some damage or loss or some discomfort, praise God, amen. So you're going to do it if it causes damage, hurt, or discomfort to us. Don't, don't let it be to the other person, praise God. I'm reminded of Jacob in, Ju in Judges 1135, amen. He said, Lord, if you give me the victory in the battle, amen, whatever come out of my house, amen, I'm going to just offer it up to you. And guess what, amen, God. God gave him the victory. How many remember God gave it a rich victory? And you promised the Lord, if you just bring me out, get me out of this mess, praise God, from Zion. I'm going to serve you 
the rest of my life. Get me out of this mess, Lord. I'm going to do right. I'm going to quit doing wrong, praise God from Zion. And God got you out of the mess, but you didn't keep your word. You see what I'm saying? And so Jacob came back. And guess what? When he came out the house, his, when he came back, his daughter came out the house. Praise God. Hallelujah. So that means he's supposed to offer up his daughter unto the Lord. And guess what he said in Judges 11.35? I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I cannot go back. I cannot go back. And he let her go and, 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 and do her and go around the, the mountains or whatever. You read it. <laughs> Praise God. And she said, I'm coming back. Amen. And he did what he said he would do. Praise God from Zion. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament. Thank you, Jesus. So you got to keep your word. Amen. To God. I promise you, Lord, I'm going to serve you through the thick and the thin. Amen. I'm not going to thin out when things thin out. Praise God. I'm going to stick through the trials and tribulation. I'm going to stick through the persecution because I promise you, Lord, if you save me, come on, somebody. And then when you give your word to people, strive your best to keep it. Some things beyond our control, but keep it the best you can. Amen. If it, if it hurts you, if it come against you, let it come against you. And then the next thing here, praise God, hallelujah. And just a few more here. And the next thing here, praise God, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, verse 5, he that putteth not out his money to usury. He, he, he put not out his money to use it. So, so, so the point here, if you're going to stay in the church, amen, it's going to take, uh, uh, take one that is more concerned about helping others than making a profit. You got to be more concerned about helping others than making a profit. Amen. We should not lend money at interest. Praise God. It says that in, in Leviticus and in Proverbs. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Proverbs 28 and 8. It says that in both of these scriptures. Amen. Amen. We might not have time. Amen. To turn to it. But amen. It tells you not to. Okay. Here we go. Amen. So take thou no usury of him or increase. Amen. But fear the Lord. Praise God. And, and, and let your brother live. You understand what I'm saying? Try to help him out. And don't charge you no money. He already struggling. <laughs> and you say, well, you pay me back. I want, I want 3%. Amen. <laughs> hey, he already struggling to pay you back. <laughs> How can I preach? <laughs> Praise God. And then Proverbs, amen, 28 and 8. Amen. It says there also about the usury. And these things in the Bible, he, uh, he that by usury and unjust gain increases his substance, God said he's going to gather it, amen, to give somebody else to the poor. God ain't going to let him have it because he's getting over on his brother. Praise God, hallelujah. Are you listening? Amen. So listen, we should not, love should be the motivating factor in helping others instead of the desire to make a profit for, for, from another's misfortune. Amen. It ought to be love. You ought to give. Amen. Praise God. A Christian should not take advantage of another's poverty to enhance his own financial structure. And then last but not least, the word of God never promises a man blessing to the one that would loan but to the one that would give acts 20 and 35 says it's more blessed to give than to receive amen more blessed to give than to receive that's the latter part of verse number 35 and then second Corinthians 7 amen 7 of b through 8 talks about amen praise god amen it good that giveth, amen, praise God, amen, a, a, a bountifully shall receive bountifully. Oh, God will bless us, amen, if we do what is right. And then last but not least, praise God, what it takes to stay in the church? Anybody want to stay in the church? Praise God, hallelujah. And then it takes one that is willing to not bribe uh, against or an innocent person, as it says there, it says it in another way, or take a reward, amen, against the innocent. When you take a reward, you're taking a bribe. Praise God. So we take, what it takes to stay in the church, amen, a real Christian would not for any gain to himself do anything against, amen, a well-being of or the detriment of the innocent. He ain't going to take no bribe. He ain't going to do nothing. Praise God. I'm talking about what it takes to stay in the church. So in perspective here, as we close this out, how many want to stay in the church? Praise God. What it takes to stay in the church? Praise God. In Psalm 15 in perspective, amen. Verse 5, in the latter part of verse 5, it says, listen, amen. He that doeth these things, amen, will what? He that doeth these things will never be moved. That, that's a promise from God. You want to stay in the church? Amen. What it take to stay in the You do these things right here. He that do these things shall never be moved. Demons came. Bulldozers came moving. Demons came moving. Amen. Hellhounds came moving. Come on, somebody. Because he is 
doing the things that it takes to stay in the church. Amen. Praise God. Number one says a person, amen, with these characteristics will never be moved from the church. Amen. Psalms 125 and 1 says, They that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion, that shall not be removed. Praise God. Hallelujah. That abideth forever. How many going to stay in the church? Every true member of the church is like, amen, praise God. Every true member of the church, like the church itself, the church and a member, are built upon the rock, and the gates of hell can't prevail against the church. Gates of hell can't prevail against you when you're in the church, when you're doing what you're supposed to do. Come on. Who going to abide in the tabernacle? Who going to take these characteristics and, 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 and lock them down and say, I'm going to stay through the storm and the rain. I'm going to stay. Listen, praise God. Hallelujah. Temptation, amen, shall not overcome one with these characteristics. Amen. Described in Psalm 15. Temptation going to come, but it can't overcome you when you uh, uh, embrace these, amen, these things that we talked about tonight. Amen. Temptation can't have its way. Amen. It's going to come, and every man is tempted, but when you have these characteristics mentioned in this chapter here, amen, you're going to uh, not be moved. You're going to abide. You're going to stick and stay. Amen. You're going to abide and stay in the tabernacle. Praise God. Trouble shall be over will not overwhelm you with these characteristics described in Psalm 15. The trouble won't overwhelm you. Praise God. Hallelujah. In essence, the Christian will be able will, will be able in the tabernacle and dwell. I'm sorry. The Christian will abide in the tabernacle and dwell. How many want to abide? How many want to dwell? Praise God. Hallelujah. Regardless of what come, regardless of what go, you in that intimate place and you will have stability in your life when you uh, adopt these characteristics Characteristic described here in the book of Psalm 15. How many are gonna grab hold to it? Amen. He, uh, we are here challenged to take fast hold of the characteristics here, given that we may never be moved from God's tabernacle on the earth, which is the church. We ought to be committed, Amen, to being the Christian described in Psalm 15. How many are gonna do it? How many are gonna tell the devil he's a liar? Tell the devil I'm gonna abide in the tabernacle. I'm gonna dwell in the holy hill, regardless of what come or go, regardless of how the devil fight. I'm gonna abide in the tabernacle. I'm gonna dwell in the holy hill. Praise God from Zion. So in conclusion, let us abide in the tabernacle, the church. Let us dwell in the holy hill. Praise God, which is the church. Amen. Fight Satan and the forces of evil. Amen. It's going to take fighting Satan and the forces of evil to abide in the church. You got to fight the devil. He can't go no further than you let him fight the demons. Amen. The hellhounds. Amen. To stay in the tabernacle. Stay in the church. Praise God. To abide. You got to fight the flesh to abide in the church. You got to fight self to abide in the church. Come on, somebody. You got to fight the world to abide in the church. You got to fight, hallelujah. You got to fight the good fight of faith to abide in the church. Amen. We, we, we won't let nothing, you ought not let nothing in this world keep you, amen, from abiding in the church. Don't let nothing in the world get you out of the church. Amen. Don't love nothing in the world and let you uh, let them get you out of the church. Amen. Don't love nobody so much you let them get you out the tabernacle. Got the house of God. Don't love your mama, your daddy, sister, brother, husband, wife, praise God, friend. Amen. Nobody. He just said, love it. Father, mother, more than me is not worthy of me. Jesus said that. He that loveth sister, brother, more than me is not worthy of me. He that taken out his cross is not worthy of me. Praise God. So do not love anyone so much you let them get you out of the tabernacle, out the church, out the house of God. There's real joy in the tabernacle. Come on, somebody. You got to go, go through tribulation. You can go through it in the tabernacle. When you go through trials, you can go through in the tabernacle. Praise God with the church of Jesus Christ. The only place you can get through your trials and tribulation is in the church of Jesus Christ. Only way you can get through your temptation is in the church of Jesus Christ. Only way you can get through your problems, you got to abide, you got to stay. Amen. Who shall abide in that tabernacle? Who shall dwell in that holy hill? Who going to stay in the church? Where is God from Zion? If you got to cry, cry in the church. If you got to moan, moan in the church. Fall out, fall out in the church and get up. Praise God and tell the devil, amen, I'm going to stand. Amen. Put your foot down. Tell him I'm going to abide. Hey, regardless of what come or go, I'm going to abide. Praise God. I'm going to dwell in the holy hill. I'm going to stay in the church. What it take to stay in the church? Amen. There's real joy in the tabernacle, which is the holy hill. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about that superficial joy that's in the world. There's real joy in the church of Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. Not in that world. No, 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 no. Amen. Amen. That's 
cheap thrill to last for a minute. It ain't gonna last long. But there's real joy. I will praise God with joy to withdraw water from the wells of salvation. There's real peace, amen, in the tabernacle of the Holy Hill, which is the church. Amen. That peace that passes understanding that'll keep your heart in the midst of your challenges, in the midst of your trials and tribulations. There's real peace, praise God. There's real love in the tabernacle, which is the Holy Hill of the church. I'm talking about real love of God, the real love, praise God, hallelujah. We need that, amen, not that so-called puppy love stuff in the world. You got real love in the tabernacle in the Holy Hill, praise God. You got real salvation in the tabernacle of the Holy Hill called the church. Real salvation, praise not no thank so, but the real thing that'll cleanse you, that'll sanctify you, praise God, that'll make you ready for the rapture. Real salvation, praise God. You got the real, you can stand, praise God, in the tabernacle of the Holy Hill called the church. Amen. We couldn't stand in the world, but as soon as I got in the church, I got something to stand on. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. I got something to stand on in the tabernacle. Amen. Somebody ought to stay in the church. Oh, stay in the church. Amen. There's real victory. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the tabernacle of the Holy Hill called the church, there's real victory. And all the blessings, amen, that God designed for us. Amen. The blessings and the victory, they're all in the tabernacle in the church. Amen. You got to stay in the church. Anybody want to stay in the church? And last but not least, there's eternal life. Amen. Only for those in the tabernacle. Amen. The Holy Hill called the church. You stay in the church, Jesus coming back for you. You stay in the church, praise God from Zion. And the Jesus coming back for you. Everything you need is in the tabernacle in the church. Amen. If it ain't in the tabernacle in the church, amen, you don't need it. Praise God. Everything you need is in the church of Jesus Christ. Praise God from Zion. So who going to buy? Who going to stay? Amen. What it take to stay in the church? Amen. David laid it out. He nailed it down. And what it take to stay in the tabernacle? Who going to buy? Amen. I'm asking a question. Who going to buy in the tabernacle? Who going to dwell in the holy hill? Will it be you and you and you? Let us all abide, stick and stay through the thick and the thin. And when Jesus come back, we'll be ready to go back with him when he comes. Amen. Anybody that's not, amen, have not made a decision, you ought to come on and repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and let God fill you with the Holy Ghost. And then you'll be saying, amen, I'm going to abide, I'm going to stay, I'm going to stick and stay. I got everything I need. Just keep on reading Psalm 15. Just get everything in that and all the apostles' doctrine. You stick with the apostles' doctrine and you're going to abide, you're going to stick and stay and you be the one that holding up your hand. Yes, I will abide. I will stay. Amen. Who shall abide in the tabernacle? Who shall dwell in the holy hill? Amen. What it take to stay in the church? Amen. We've talked about it tonight. Let us do what it takes to stay in the church. And God's going to bless you. He's going to encourage you. He's going to lift your spirit. And most of all, amen, he's going to come back with you. Amen. Or for you, rather, when the rapture take place. God bless you as our prayer. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I will be steadfast.
Stand up, 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 stand up